All right, blood groups. What to say about blood groups? Uh, blood groups, they really have to do with uh, what are called antigens, which are small proteins that are on the surface of the red blood cells. These are going to be what determine the different blood groups. Honestly, there is a large number of actually different types of blood groups. Like it says, there are up to 30 varieties of naturally occurring antigens that can end up on red blood cells. Generally, when we look at blood groups, the two main types of blood groupings that we're going to worry about are what ref are referred to as the ABO blood groupings, as well as the RH factor or RH blood group. These are the ones that are important with uh, transfusions. They can, when given the wrong ones, can lead to extremely bad consequences if the wrong blood is transfused into somebody. As it says at the bottom there, there is a large number of other blood groups that they might be used for uh, paternity testing or something else along those lines, but really when we talk about transfusions and other issues like that, it's the ABO blood groups and RH blood groups that we're really going to worry about, and that's what I'm going to focus on. So blood type, what we're going to see is it's determined by what antigens or what proteins are on the surface of these red blood cells. So the antigens, what they are is they're glycoproteins, which these are carbohydrate-coated proteins. And in any particular individual, all the red blood cells in that individual are going to carry the same antigens on those blood cells. And at least with the ABO blood groups, these were figured out in the early 1900s. Um, back in the day, people would lose blood and they would try to transfuse it with somebody else's blood. And every once in a while, it's the person would miraculously recover. Uh, a lot of times, instead of miraculously recovering, they would die almost immediately. And it wasn't until the early 1900s that they figured out that it's these blood antigens and the, the ABO blood group is one of the main ones that was responsible for this, these reactions. So how this kind of works, if you're going to have type A blood, what it's going to mean is all your red blood cells have an antigen on the surface that we call antigen A. Type B blood, they carry antigen B on the surface. Um, if you have the genetics to have both the A and B antigens, you end up with type AB blood. And finally, if you have neither the A antigen or the B antigen on your red blood cells, that is what we refer to as type O blood. So type A blood, like I said, has the A antigens on the surface. And at least right from birth, how this kind of works out in our body is we, because we have type A blood, the one type of antigen that you shouldn't, if you have type A blood, the one type of antigen that you shouldn't see in the bloodstream would be type B. So genetically you're type A, therefore there should be no B blood in your bloodstream. And the body likes to really prevent foreign things from entering the body. So what we see is within our bloodstream, within the plasma of the blood, that we are going to express and create antibodies against type B antigens. So in type A blood, you're going to have A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, which determines your blood type, but you're also going to have antibodies against B again in your plasma of your blood. So the antibodies, what's going to happen is if they were to come into contact with a B antigen, so like it's shown here at the bottom with these B blood cells interacting with this B antibody, it's going to cause the antibodies and antigens to clump up or kind of go together. And this is what we refer to as agglutination, kind of a clumping of red blood cells, similar to coagulation, but agglutination is an antibody-antigen interaction where coagulation is going to be that fibrinogen becoming fibrin reaction. So if you get enough type A plasma with B blood cells, what we're going to see is you're going to get this reaction where somebody transfused B type blood into somebody with A blood type. This is what's going to happen. You're going to get these clumping reaction that's going to get these large agglutinations or clumpings of these foreign blood cells together. And if this is had to happen in a transfusion, what happens is you get these large clumps and they're very similar to clots actually moving through the bloodstream and at branch points in smaller areas these can actually block up the blood vessels and would lead to infarctions, strokes, or a number of things like that. So the wrong type of blood going into the wrong recipient. 
type B blood, not surprisingly, has B antigen on the surface of the blood cell. Because of this, it's also going to have antibodies in the plasma against A because if you have type B blood, you shouldn't have any A antigen in your bloodstream. Finally, type O blood, it has no antigens on the surface. If this is the case, both the A and B antigens would be foreign to you. So what we see in the type O blood is that you have antigen antibodies against both A and B. Because of this, a person with O-type blood can only receive O-type blood. Type AB, well, well, what type of antigen should it have? Well, give you a couple seconds here. Antigens, type AB, again, your blood type is determined by the antigens on your blood cell. So in that case, type AB blood would have antigens of both A and B. And if it has both A and B antigens on the surface of the blood cell, in terms of antibodies, what should we be seeing? Well, technically, we should not be seeing any because you have both antigens there, and if you had antibodies against either I, A or B antigens, you would get a agglutination reaction. And this is the case. Antigens, we see both A and B antigens on the surface of the blood cell, and the antibodies, there is no antibodies against either A or B on these blood cells. So to kind of summarize it here real quick, blood type is determined by the antigen that's on the surface of the red blood cell. So type A has A antigens only. Type B has B antigens only. Type AB has both A and B antigens. And if you have neither A or B antigens, you are type O. And depending on your blood type, you're going to have antibodies against the antigens that you do not have of those ABO blood groups. So if you're type A, you're going to have antibodies against B. If you're type B, you're going to have antibodies against type A. If you're AB, you will not have any antibodies. And that actually makes that person a universal recipient of the blood types because they don't have any antibodies against any other blood cells. Type O is going to have antibodies against both A and B antigens because neither of those are on the surface of the blood cells. And to kind of show you what the testing looks like and what this agglutination reaction looks like, in these cases here, so the what's going on here is they've added blood to a serum of a person that's going to have antibodies against A. So if you do that, you can see type AB blood, so they have the antigen on their blood cells, they have antibodies against A in the serum right here, you can see you get this agglutination reaction. Same thing because they are AB, they have the B antigen as well, antibodies against B in this serum right here, you get these clumping reactions, you can see type A, blood cells only clump with the anti-A antibodies on this side, no clumping reaction here, or agglutination reaction. Type B, you can see it only agglutinates with the anti-B serum. And you can see with the type O, you get no agglutination whatsoever because there is no A or B antigens on those red blood cells. And this is actually, if they're going to do a blood test to determine what blood type you have, this is exactly what they would do. They would get these serums, these anti A and anti-B serums, and use a sample of your blood to see what it agglutinates with. So what this shows you here is the kind of, at least with the ABO blood groups, the kind of type matching, what you would need to do, and who can receive what type of blood. So if you look right down the center of this line here, you can see A type, this is recipient, this is donor. You can see A, you can definitely give A from the donor to a recipient with A type blood. And if we specific type match, you can see that all these are true. O, you can give O to O, and you can give AB to AB. One of the things we do see here is along the O in terms of the donor, you have yes with a question mark. So if we look at giving O cells to a recipient of A, O cells have no antigens of either A or B on the surface. So technically, if you're giving O red blood cells to a person with type A, there is no antigens on the surface of those red blood cells to be a problem in that A type recipient. Same thing with the B, same thing with the AB recipient. And across here, at least in terms of the universal recipient, AB, again, you can see if you were getting O cells from this, no antigens to receive, and A and B, AB person has no antibodies in their blood, in their plasma against A or B, so they should be able to receive all these blood types. Again, there is question marks on these, and why the question marks? It really goes down to the idea of when we're talking about giving blood to somebody, are we giving them whole blood? in terms of the donor. So if we we're giving somebody O blood, are we giving them just the O blood cells? Or are we giving them the O whole blood, which is going to be the blood cells as well as the plasma?
That's where the issue can come in. Most donations nowadays are done with packed cells, which are blood cells that are separated out from the plasma, spun down and reconstituted in a type of saline. And with these ones, you don't really have to worry about what's going on with the plasma. But if I was to give you this, for instance, a person lost 50% of their blood and they were type A and they only had O type blood available for a transfusion, could this be a problem? Well, if it's just packed cells, the answer to this would be no, it wouldn't be a problem. So if you're giving only O blood cells to a person with A-type blood, that's fine. What could be a problem is if you were giving whole blood in the plasma of the O-type person, if you have O-type blood, you have the O-type cells with no A or B antigens on the surface. The other thing, though, if you have, you're giving whole blood, you also have the O donor's plasma as well. If you were to give that plasma to an A person, this could be an issue if you gave enough of it in the sense that O-type plasma, because the person has an O blood type, they're going to have antibodies against both A and B in their plasma. So if you were to do a whole blood donation from a type O person to a type A person, this could be a problem. And that's why there is question marks back on this slide right here in that if you're doing PAC cells, all the ones with the question marks are fine. If you're doing whole blood donations, all the ones with the question marks would not be an okay match. If you're doing whole blood, only type specific matching is okay. The other blood type that we need to worry about is the RH factor. It actually comes from where it was found, which was in the rhesus monkey. What we're going to see is RH antigen is another one that can be an issue on a red blood cells when it comes to transfusions. So if a person has the RH factor, we generally consider them to be RH positive and about 85% of the population is RH positive. About 15% of the population is RH negative, meaning they lack the RH antigen on the surface of their blood cells. One of the things that's quite a bit different about the RH blood groups versus the ABO blood groups the antibodies in the ABO blood groups are made from birth. They spontaneously are formed. With the anti-RH antibodies, they are not spontaneously formed. This is much more like getting exposed to some type of bacteria or something else like that. In that, if you're RH negative and you've never been exposed to RH positive blood, you will not have antibodies against it. Only those that are RH negative who have been exposed to the RH factor Will generate antibodies against it. So like it says here, if an RH negative individual receives RH positive blood the first time there would not be an issue but they would generate an immune response and make antibodies against that RH factor from then on. The second exposure to this person would likely result in a bad reaction with that agglutination reaction taking place and a, pretty much a typical bad transfusion reaction if you gave a second dose of that RH positive blood to an RH negative person. Where this really can become an issue is with pregnancy. So especially with RH negative mothers, this can become a problem. So RH negative mothers, they do not have the RH factor, meaning if they're ever exposed to RH positive blood, they will make antibodies against it. A lot of times with the first pregnancy, this isn't an issue. Usually maternal and fetal blood do not mix during gestation, but a lot of times when that placenta is being delivered and the placenta tears away from the uterus, what can happen is you get a mixing of the maternal and the fetal blood, and if this fetus happens to be RH positive, what this means is the mother can be exposed to the RH positive blood and therefore, after this first pregnancy, is going to develop antibodies against the RH factor. And any subsequent Pregnancy with a RH positive fetus again, certain types of these antibodies can actually cross the placenta and what this does is it's going to cause issues in that fetus. So the fetus could be born with severe anemia or it can actually lead to stillbirth in this second RH positive fetus. What we do against this now is in RH negative mothers, if an RH negative mother is pregnant, they receive a shot of something that's known as Rogam. What Rogam is, and this is kind of a confusing idea here, but what Rogam is, is it's actually antibodies against the RH factor. So what they do is, before the delivery, earlier on in the pregnancy, the RH-negative mother will receive antibodies against the RH factor. 
the main thing that's going on here is antibodies, at least injected antibodies, have a shelf life of about six months in the body. The thinking behind this is, is if we put enough Rh negative antibody, I mean Rh antibodies into the bloodstream of the Rh negative mother, when she does deliver, any of these Rh positive antigens are going to get bound up and neutralized by the antibodies that have been injected in. And what this really means is the mother gets a shot before the birth, and if the baby is found to be Rh positive after it's born, then she gets another shot of this Rogam. But what happens is it binds up all these Rh positive antigens before they're actually able to bind to any cells in the mother's body and bring about her own immune response and generate her own antibodies against it. So that is how this can prevent the mother from having issues later on. And just to kind of give you an overall idea of the frequency of these different blood types, generally when we talk about the different blood types, you probably heard O positive, O negative. The O refers to the ABO blood grouping. The positive or negative refers to the RH factor. So if you're O positive, it means you have type O blood and you're positive for the RH factor. That is actually the most common blood type, as you can see, about a third of the population, a little bit more than that, is O positive. Like we already said, the negatives are a lot less common. So O negative, which is generally considered to be the universal donor in that there is no antigens at all on the surface of these blood cells, so they have no O, they have no none of the AB antigens as they also have no RH antigens on the surface. That one is about only about one in eight of the population, so like I said, they're about six, seven percent. This is the one that the Red Cross usually would like to get as much as possible because if you can't type match somebody, if you give them O negative pack cells, anybody can receive those. And if you look around there, you can see AB negative is definitely the least common blood type.